Coming up on today's show, the Dacia Spring EV promises a future where electric vehicles aren't all about bells and whistles and more about being truly affordable. Tesla updates its entire range of vehicles with improved range while lowering the price of the Model S in response to the lowest price Lucid Air and General Motors autonomous vehicle arm Cruise Automotive gets the go-ahead to let its autonomous vehicles go driverless in San Francisco. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another Weekend Roundup show. Wherever you are in the world and whatever the time is, I'm hoping that you can find some time to sit down and soak up this week's top news stories. So get comfy. This show is sponsored by the Electric Auto Association. Join them and help the switch from fossil fuels to electric today by going to electricauto.org. Thanks to the seemingly endless stream of high-end, high-ticket electric and plug-in hybrids entering the market, it's all too easy to forget more affordable plug-in options. But this week, as part of its 10-day-long e-ways event, Renault's budget-oriented brand, Dacia, unveiled the production version of its Dacia Spring electric car. Essentially, a European market version of the Renault KZE that's due to go on sale in India and China next year, this subcompact four-seater is aimed at budget-conscious drivers and does away with lots of the bells and whistles of higher-priced electric cars. You can get a center touchscreen as an optional extra. You can get DC quick charging as an optional extra. And it has what I guess is a range of around 120 miles or so in real world conditions, 191 kilometers. But it's expected to sell for under 20,000 euros before incentives, which means in some countries in Europe, it could cost under 10 grand. Now that's impressive. Tesla has a reputation for just tweaking the specifications of its vehicles as and when there are tweaks to be made. But this week, Tesla actually upgraded specs for all of its vehicles in one fell swoop. Model X Long Range Plus was given a 20 mile, 32 kilometer range boost to 371 miles or 597 kilometers, with Model X performance getting a slight increase as well. The Model S performance got a 39 mile, 62 kilometer range increase to 387 miles, 623 kilometers. But there was no change for the Model S Long Range Plus. The Model 3 got a new interior and a chrome delete, as we mentioned in last week's show, plus a new heat pump and increases in range for both standard range plus and performance, with the latter now getting 315 miles, 506 kilometers per charge. Model Y also gets a boost with long range dual motor Model Y now rated at 325 miles, 515 kilometers per charge, with a smaller increase in range for the Model Y performance. Volkswagen has officially placed an order for more than 2,200 new production line robots for use in its Emden, Hanover and Chattanooga production facilities. Destined to be part of Volkswagen's brand new electric vehicle ID production lines, they will be used to produce the ID4 in Chattanooga and Emden from 2022 onwards and to produce the ID Buzz minivan at the Hanover production line starting in the same year. While we don't have an official production name yet for the ID Buzz, I'd love to see it called the ID2, if only because of its historical connection to the Volkswagen Type 2 combi that still, to this day, remains one of Volkswagen's most popular vehicles. And if you're confused about ID4 production dates, don't be. For now, the ID4 is being produced alongside the ID3 at Volkswagen's Zweikau facility. Last week, we told you that Waymo has been given the green light to open up its fleet of Waymo One autonomous minivans to let members of the public ride in them for the first time. And this week, we've got another autonomous vehicle story to share. As announced in the middle of this week, GM-owned autonomous vehicle startup Cruise has been given the green light by the California Department of Motor Vehicles to transition to fully autonomous vehicle testing in San Francisco. That's using its fleet of specially built Chevrolet Bolt EVs. 
Previously, a safety driver was required to be in the car behind the wheel at all times, but now the cruise fleet, which are a common sight on Frisco roads, can be operated fully autonomously. It's one of 60 autonomous vehicle companies that's got an active permit to test with a safety driver in California, but only the fifth to receive permission to test with no driver. Along with the Tesla upgrades I covered earlier in the show, this week saw not one, but two price drops for the Tesla Model S. The first came as a result of Tesla's general lineup upgrades, but the second came directly after Lucid announced its entry-level Lucid Air, order books for which have just opened, would start at $69,900. It offers 406 miles, that's 653 kilometers of range per charge, a little bit more than the Tesla Long Range Plus Model S. But in response to that price, Elon Musk announced on Twitter that, quote, the gauntlet has been thrown down. The prophecy will be fulfilled. Model S price changes to 69420 tonight. I'm not sure if this move is just Musk being Musk. The price change certainly includes his favourite numbers. But honestly, it also makes him look a little like a middle schooler who can't be beaten at anything. Sorry, Elon. Mitsubishi has just unveiled its production version of the Eclipse Cross PHEV, time to coincide with a redesign of its Eclipse Cross family. Fitted with a modified version of the plug-in hybrid drivetrain found in the larger Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, this compact crossover plug-in has a 2.4-litre gasoline engine and twin electric motors, 70 kilowatt and 60 kilowatts rear and front respectively, which means even when the engine is not running, it is possible to have electric or all-wheel drive capabilities. The 13.8 kilowatt hour battery pack is good for up to 45 kilometers, 28 miles, on the WLTP test cycle, but it's not destined for North America. Those in Europe, Asia, Australia, and New Zealand should get it, however, and I think it still comes with Chidemo DC quick charging. NHTSA has officially opened a preliminary investigation into three separate fires involving the Chevrolet Bolt EV. The reported cases thus far all appear to have started in the same part of the car, in the battery area under the rear seat. But they also started in different circumstances. In one case, the car was plugged in and charging from a domestic charging station when it caught fire. But in another, the car caught fire after being driven 12 miles after being fully charged. Given the recent issues with LG Chem's battery packs and the Hyundai Kona Electric, a car that was recalled last week to rectify a battery monitoring defect that could cause an electrical short in the pack, I've got to say I expect something similar for bolts in the future. As usual, since this is a developing story, we will keep you posted. If you're in the US, the chances are the upcoming election is at the forefront of your mind. I voted this week. But if you're in Massachusetts, you're also going to get an interesting ballot measure to consider other than the usual stuff and who you want in the White House. A measure that could change who can see and use vehicle telematics data. And Tesla wants you to vote no on the measure. Question one asks voters to decide if they want third-party auto repairers and owner enthusiasts to have access to their car's telematic system. It's part of an extension of a previous successful ballot measure that forced automakers to give independent repairers access to diagnostic information in the Commonwealth. It was a success for the right to repair movement. There is significant support for this measure, but Tesla says voting yes would put it at risk of cyber attacks. We'll know in just under three weeks or so what the outcome of the ballot will be. And now it's time for short shorts. Zero Motorcycles has refreshed its lineup for 2021 with some modest tweaks, mainly new colors and not a lot else. Pricing stays pretty much the same as the 2020 lineup as does vehicle specs. I'm still hoping we can get a ride soon. General Motors has announced that the Hamtramck facility, where it previously made the Chevrolet Volt, has been given a rebranding as part of its push towards electric vehicles. From now on, it'll be known as Factory Zero, which frankly is a lot easier for me to pronounce. Italian motorcycle company Engica may be known for its high-end, high-ticket motorcycles, but this week it announced a new partnership with Del Orto to develop a range of new, lower-powered motorcycles. They'll offer 50cc to 125cc equivalent specs. 
Production is about to begin on the three-row version of the Tesla Model Y. Based on the photos I've seen, I'm guessing the third row is really only going to be useful for those with very thin legs or children. Deliveries of the third row Model Y will start in December. European electric truck company Arrival has announced that it secured a site for a $46 million microfactory in South Carolina. While in Europe it will make delivery trucks, the USA facility will focus on building electric buses instead. Several separate sources in Germany are claiming that Tesla's Giga Berlin facility had its water supply cut off this week after Tesla failed to pay its water bills. Apparently since then Tesla has signed a water supply contract, but in moving so fast it looks like it's missing out the basic stuff. Ford has officially delayed the launch of its escape plug-in hybrid in the US to next year, primarily because of reported fires with its European sibling, the Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid. The latter has a stop sale and owners are being asked not to plug in or drive in electric mode until a fix has been developed. A bizarre TikTok ad campaign for influencers is offering big bucks for any TikTokers who are willing to make posts with a sound, which apparently is a song-based meme, that mocks Elon Musk and his attitude to unionization, work conditions and COVID-19. I don't TikTok. Mercedes-Benz has confirmed that it will use its upcoming EQS and its lead vehicle for the rollout of the EQ-branded electric vehicles in North America. This news pretty much confirms what we're expecting, that the EQC is unlikely to ever go on sale there. A new Model Y owner captured video this week on his home security camera of the rear window of his Model Y spontaneously shattering in the garage overnight. It's the latest in a line of reports of Model 3s and Model Ys having rear windows shattering. Tesla remains quiet on the issue. Workhorse, the company that spawned Lordstown Motors, has announced a new $200 million financing deal through the sale of convertible notes. It will use the money to accelerate the production of several electric workhorse models. Bollinger has confirmed that it is on the lookout for about $50 million of investment to help it finish engineering work on its production version of the B1 SUV and B2 pickup truck. However, it said it's not interested in going through a reverse merger right now. BMW has issued a recall on some 26,700 plug-in hybrid models worldwide, one third of which have already been delivered to customers. The recall is to rectify an issue with poorly manufactured cells which could pose a fire risk due to improper making. The French government has announced plans to offer citizens up to €1,000 towards the cost of buying a used electric vehicle. It already offers funds for new electric vehicles, but this fund will help those who can't afford a new car transition to electric. The European Union is considering a dramatic change to electric bicycle regulations that could see it remove type approval regulations for more powerful pedal electric bicycles and delivery vehicles. It could lead to more pedal electric delivery vehicles in major cities. Wright Flight, a US-based company, has been contracted by US-initiated ARPA-E to design, build and test electric airplane components, including battery management systems, controllers and redundant systems, all to make electric air flight a commercial reality. Because of its problems with the Ford Cougar plug-in in Europe, a problem which means customers can't drive or charge them in electric mode, Ford is now finding itself looking for an emissions partner to avoid paying massive fines for not meeting fleet-wide EU emissions requirements. A pilot project using private and public data has tracked light-duty delivery vehicles as a way to figure out where charging stations should be sited in central London. Working with the government and AI analysis, it's identified over 2,000 potential EV charging sites based on demand and land availability. Mercedes-Benz has unveiled an off-road capable version of its EQC electric vehicle. Called the EQC 4x4 squared, the car is sadly a concept vehicle, but our buddy Johnny Smith over at the car, uh, the late break show, got a little play. It's a great watch and you should definitely watch it. Thanks for letting us use the video, Johnny. Nissan has opened a new pilot project in the UK called Serve City that will allow it to develop a blueprint for future autonomous vehicle deployments around the UK. It's joined by four other partners and it will share its progress.
Lotus has sent its first true electric car, the Lotus Evia, out onto the iconic Goodwood track as part of this year's Goodwood Speed Week. Three pre-production EVAs have taken to the track and the crazy fast high-powered hypercars certainly perform. And they also sound pretty amazing too. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Back at the start of this year, Fisker unveiled its ocean crossover concept at CES. That concept was, we understood, built on the MEB platform that Volkswagen uses for its ID3 electric car. For some time, it was expected that Fisker would license the MEB platform from Volkswagen so that Fisker could make the Volkswagen MEB the basis for mass production of the ocean. But this week, Fisker caught us all out by announcing that it secured a manufacturing contract with Magna Stair, a well-known automotive production company that actually makes the Jaguar I-Pace. Fisker now says the Ocean will be built on its own FM29 platform. In its press release announcing the deal, Fisker says it expects to deliver the Ocean SUV with a price tag of less than $38,000 before incentives. And finally, Tesla has always done things a little differently. From its referral program to its decision to stay clear of traditional automotive dealerships, its approach has certainly been as far away from your average car company as it's possible to get. And one of those unique points of difference has been Tesla's no quibble return policy. Started last year, Tesla would give customers up to seven days to make sure they were happy with their purchase or return it for a full refund, as long as there was no physical damage to the vehicle and it had less than 1,000 miles on the clock, you could take your Tesla back for up to seven days. To my knowledge, very few, if any people, actually took up Tesla on that, but late on Friday we learned that it's a program Tesla has now quietly ended. I'm not sure if it's because nobody used it, but Tesla certainly did change some of the terms over the last year to stop people from abusing it. With COVID still hampering in-person Tesla store visits, it's not entirely clear what happens now. But if you are someone who is buying sight unseen, I'd love to know what your new experience is. Let me know below. And on that note, we are done for today. Before I go, though, I would like to thank the Electric Auto Association for their ongoing sponsorship. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967, and they firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. You can find out how to join, how to become a local EV educator, find local monthly meetups to attend to, or just find EV owners to talk about making your own switch to electric with by going to electricauto.org. I would love it if you would like, comment and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And if you do feel able, please consider supporting us using the links below. If you already do, as usual, you have my deepest gratitude. And if you're unable to do that at this time, just know that interacting with us on YouTube and social media really helps the algorithm and that gets us more eyeballs. Don't forget to check out our new merch store over at Redbubble. And if you use the term full deals at checkout in the discount window, you'll get between 20 and 60% off your order. I'll be back next week, but in the meantime, please keep yourself safe and your loved ones safe. And yes, that does mean wearing a mask and remembering to wash your hands. Keep evolving.